Hi and welcome back to the next lesson. In this lesson we are going to add in some data labels. Now I've made this slightly shorter just now because I want to be able to put a table in here to explain what I'm going to do as I go through the process of adding in the data labels. Now you can add data labels and that is done easily enough by just heading into the format option and enabling the data labels. However we can see here that we've got quite a few data labels um, and as we, get, as we scale this, we can see that each one of these has got a data label. Um, we're not really too interested in every single one of these. We only want to see the data labels at the start, the peak, and the current values. Okay, so the, the first week, the highest week, and the current week. So whatever those are. We're not interested in the other ones. Now to do that, you can't do it using any of the options that are in here. Okay, so unlike Excel where you can decide which data labels you want to see if you've used it, it's an all or nothing for this particular situation. However, there is a way you can work around that. So the first thing I need to do is, I'm going to go and create a table. We need to go and create a, another trend that we're going to use to superimpose on top of this one. And that trend is only going to show three values. It's going to show the first value, it's going to show the highest value and it's going to show the most recent value, the current week. Okay, so let's go and add a table. And we will add our date in here. I just think it's it a little bit easier to work with the tables. Okay, so we've got the work order count. We've already got that. So we can see that's our work order count. We've got our current week. So let's add that in. So we can see it's only going to show a value in the current week, okay? And that is because it's only going to show the value for this current week, which is this, is, um, yeah, is that, that's exactly what's built into it. If we go in here, it's looking at the latest week, it's looking at the maximum week over all of the work orders, and then, and only then is it going to carry out this count row, um, function here to count the number of rows, which is the number of the defects. Okay, we're filtering it by, by that last week year, which is calculated here. Next, we're going to go and copy this and we're going to create the same calculation, but we're going to do it for the first week and it's dead straightforward. So we'll call this first week and the only thing that's going to change is rather than max, we're going to use minx this year. Okay, so we're going to, the latest week year is going to be calculate across all of the work orders what the minimum week year is. Okay, what the minimum, and that's going to be this value here, last, oh, I'll call this, just for completeness, we'll change this to min or first, first week year and first week year. And then the result is going to be calculate. Um, basically we're going to use this filter first of all to look at our data set, which is going to be filter across the whole of the data and um, work order data. All of the work order data rows which are equal to the first, for the week year is equal to the first week. And then count the number of rows. Okay, so that's going to bring us back the number of defects for the first week. And we just press enter there. And we'll pull that into here. And we can see that's our first week. Now the final thing we need is we need to find the actual maximum value. And we can go and do that just now. So let's add another measure. Uh, this time let's make it slightly bigger. And we'll paste that in. So this one here now we're going to count the, we're going to use a select, sl all selected, so everything, all the selected values in the current um, filter context. So it's all of these values here. We're going to look across them all for, uh, across all the selected values for week start date, which is the, the date that we've got here. And we're going to go and count the number of work orders and we're going to return the maximum. Okay, so we're going to create it create a new table that's going to basically have all of these weekdays here, add that to each one of the rows, 
iterate over the vivo and return the maximum value. And this one here is going to act slightly differently, just in this a slightly different way, but it's, it's going to give us exactly the same at the end. And that's just going to probably add it in here. Yeah, it's going to add it in for every single date range here, but it's okay. We're never going to use this as a table anyway. Um, so the maximum value is this one here, which is one, two, four. Okay, so these are the values we need to um, to help and what achieve what we want, which is to create an underlying trend here that we can superimpose on top of this one here, but only returns three values, the first, the last, and the maximum. So let's go now, make it slightly smaller. Okay, and we're going to create a measure here. So this is the next step. So work order count, high first, last. So we've got a variable here that's going to be the work order count. So we need that because this is what we're going to compare each of these against. Then we need to get the current week, the first week, and the highest value. Okay. And then we're going to go, let's just tidy that up a little bit. The result is going to be a switch statement and it's basically going to look and it's going to say the work order count. So the switch statement starts, I'll just move this down so we can see it along with the code. So it starts here and basically it's asking is the work order count, which is this value here, so it's iterating through each one of these rows here, when we add in the, um, the we're going to add, the, in fact actually just add this just now so we can see it in action. that in here. And I'm going to get rid of all of these other ones. But I'm going to leave that one. So it's asking the question, is this 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 measure here? So for this particular field here is saying is this value here, the work order count, is it equal to the work order count for the current week? Okay. Is it equal so it's not Okay, so it's not equal to the work order count for the current week because the current week is back here. So that moves on to the next one. Is it equal to the work order count for the first week? Which is this one here, and it says yes it is. Okay, we'll display it. That moves on to the next one and it goes through the same switch statement. Is it equal to the current week, the first week, the highest value? No, okay, well the default option here, and just make that clearer is to display the work order count. If it's not equal to any of those first three, then just display the work order count. Sorry. Okay, so, yeah, if it's... I've put... I've, um, it just returns a blank. I haven't put a blank in here, but it does return a blank if it doesn't meet any of the first three criteria. So, it's returning a blank here. And then it continues down. Is it equal to the highest value? It gets to this point here. And it will go, it's not the current value, it's not the first week. Uh, is it the highest value? If it is the highest value, then it will return that value, which is the work order count, and so on. Okay, so we're going to get three values out of this for any range of data, for any range of dates. So we've added that in there. So how does that now go on to this chart here? So let's get rid of this. And make this slightly bigger. And we're now going to add in this measure here. The first, the highest, or the high first last measure. We're going to add this into our chart as the value, another value. So you can have multiple values here. Now at the moment, it's just showing that three values and it's joining them together. So there's a couple of things we need to do. The first one is, we'll leave it at continue, so that's fine is we need to get rid of the actual line itself. Okay, so to do that, we go down to Shapes, and we scroll down to the Customize Series, and we scroll down a bit further, and we're going to select Work Order High First Last, and we're going to change that Stroke Width to Zero. Okay, so it's going to look like that's disappeared. However, it hasn't disappeared, it's fine. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and add in the data labels. So we go to data labels here, 
we go to again customize series and that's available now because we've got two different values so we can customize these individually and I am going to first of all actually go to work order count and get rid of those and then go to work order high first last and add those in so now we can see we're only displaying the first the highest and the last value which is exactly what we need the next thing we need to do is we need to add in some actual shapes so we'll go back into here customize see these is on we want to make sure this is selected no stroke width however we want to show a marker so here are those markers there <coughs> and we're going to leave or we're actually going to turn that to be a, a dark color black uh, maybe not black maybe just slightly slightly grayer and I'm also going to go and change the line so let's go back to our customize series uh, is it this one let's double check here data colors yeah there we go so this is going to be work order count and I'm going to change that to be a, diff a slightly grayer color uh, let's see yep that's fine and I'm going to go and actually change the size of that to be slightly smaller maybe a bit bigger yeah that's probably fine okay so it's just starting to kind of look a little bit nicer we've got the high uh, we've got the values here we've got the high value we've got the first value we've got the last value uh, I want to display these with, with commas so let's go and make sure that this first high last has got some commas and there we can see and I also want to make sure that there's some commas on the axis here so let's go and sort that out so I'm going to select work order count and I'm going to click on here and that's going to be giving us that okay we'll just quickly tidy up some of this um, we're going to get rid of the actual the top of it here the legend we don't need the legend uh, in terms of the x-axis we need a title on the x-axis I'm happy with that week start date which we'll make it slightly smaller so go to title and we'll just make that a little bit smaller mm. Uh, this title on the y-axis we don't need so let's go in here and we'll turn the title off and this title for the actual chart itself let's go and change that and we will make it slightly smaller and probably make it 12 and we can leave it there and we'll just call this keep it simple and we'll call this total defect trend okay now we might change that size and stuff like that later but that's going to be a, a great sort of base case now for this to copy um, and use for the other trends okay so that's us now got our base trend and in the next video we're going to start to build in the other trends for medium um, or for the low, medium and high risk group trends. I'll talk to you then.